Today I'm going to show you my new IGBT based controller and I'm also going to show off the new motor that I bought. This is the new IGBT controller, same wiring setup as before. Battery plus, motor plus, motor minus, and battery minus. Here we have the switching IGBT that draws the motor minus down to the battery minus. There are the same capacitor bank, just on a different circuit board. Uh, 0.68 microfarad, 1250 volt snubber cap. And this is the freewheeling diode in this case. I'm definitely having a problem with heating in this new controller compared to the old one. This IGBT that is doing the switching has one and a half volts across it, regardless of the drain current. So if I'm pulling, say, 200 amps, that's 300 watts. Sure, the IGBT can handle that much power dissipation, but it's got to be liquid cooled for that to happen. The gate drive circuitry is tucked away on its own little circuit board I made with a Dremel. And uh, so that is the gate and emitter on the switching IGBT. The other IGBT, they're shorted because this is our freewheeling diode. That's how you make an IGBT into a freewheeling diode. So what makes this funny is these IGBTs uh, have a gate requirement of 15 to 18 volts, maximum of 20. You know, 18 volt power supplies aren't really in, uh, in high demand, so I use a standard 24 volt power supply that I dialed the voltage down on. This has an adjustable output uh, to as low as I could go and added a few um, really crappy diodes here in series just to drop the voltage a little bit more. Uh, also to deal with the heating, you can't see too well, but there is a very high powered fan hiding under here just to try and help out, but I tell you, it does not help very much. So this is the motor, the drive motor I plan on using in the actual go-kart. It's a 24 volt rated apparently for one horsepower. That's pretty sad, but uh, I've heard you can overvolt motors like this up to double their voltage rating, nameplate rating. So. I'll be switching that out to 48 volts and based on my math I should be able to get 10 horsepower from her uh, just very instantaneously just enough to rip those tires off. So the motor came with an 18 tooth uh, timing gear, timing belt style gear. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be using this just because the belt and the matching pulley for the rear axle would be very expensive on the order of another $100. So here is again the motor plus through the field windings all the way around the motor. Field output to one of the armature windings. The other armature winding is to motor minus. So when the IGBT pulls this to ground, the current flows straight through the motor from the battery. Remember the capacitor bank we got earlier? If I just took the motor plus and hooked it up to the terminal, I get a huge spark. So I'm using this resistor to bridge the gap just for approximately five seconds and that is long enough to charge the capacitors up to 12 volts which is the 12 volt battery I'm using right now uh, without causing a spark now when I put this terminal on here. Oh, that would have been... So I'm not going to thread down the washer because if I need to pull this off in a hurry I can just protect myself. This doesn't pull enough current to cause a real issue. This is a really loose connection, uh, but that's fine. So the first thing I did was I plugged in my power supply. You can see my fan is running now. Second thing I did was I hooked up my battery. Now lastly, I'm going to show you, this is my really, really crappy throttle pod. But uh, you know, whatever works, right? So I don't know if you can hear that, but there is an awful whine coming from both the controller and from the motor. 
That's because I'm switching at 5 kilohertz, which is a very good frequency for humans to hear. To try and make the rotation of the motor a little easier to see, I wrapped a piece of strapping around there. So now we should be able to watch the motor spin a lot more easily. So that was a jump from off to full speed. I can wind it right down. I guess it uh, actually blew the piece of tape right off on the ground. Oh well. So remember, this is a 24 volt rated series wound DC motor. Uh, I only have 12 volts on it, that's why it's going at a reasonably low speed. It's rated for a 1725 RPM at uh, 24 volts. I'll have to be very careful not to over rev the motor when I apply a full 48. I'm planning on putting a, uh, a tachometer, basically doing a reflective, reflective sensor off the end of the sprocket I plan on putting on the motor. Still faster and faster. I believe, yeah, that was maximum speed. So because this motor does so much, well, it's so much more efficient than the starter motor, uh, this block here is still very cool. Uh, the capacitors are stone cold. This number is stone cold. None of the connections are even slightly warm. Uh, this should be drawing in the range of 10 to 20 amperes. Uh, with the car starter, that was pulling 80, no problem, because it's such a poorly designed for continuous running type of motor. And there you have phase one complete of the go-kart project. Motor controller, motor. The next plan is to get an axle, a set of wheels, Add a bunch of uh, pipe and various tubing and uh, start building.